Well, it, I, I think when you say about seven new players, it's something that we, we set out to do, you know, and, and to mix it in that way with the young kids we had remaining and then the, the kids that we brought in. It's important to have that mixture. You have a lot of experience from our junior college kids coming in, our D1 transfer. It's, it's absolutely a great thing to, to have. But when you talk about the process, the process starts with us and how well we're going to go out there and get them to understand what that one common goal is and that one vision is. And of course, we have superstars. And we just have to get those superstars to understand that it takes everybody to be the champions we want to become. And I'm sure these, these guys have something to say about that as well, how we piece that together and how important it is. Like Coach said, we brought in, you know, two very good high school kids and then three experienced junior college players and then two Division I transfers who have been through the grind already of big time college basketball. So the seven kids we bring in, bringing in, to me, are just a good, a good fit to what we already have just because I think we had some good pieces already intact, but now to bring in the experience from a high level and then some solid junior college kids and then two very, very talented freshmen, I think it's a, it's a good mold for 13 kids. You know, I have to jump on that because he said something important was our two talented freshmen. Our, our freshmen are really talented. People are going to overlook these kids because they are freshmen. But they don't conduct themselves as such. They conduct themselves as great athletes. And that, that's key. That's key right there for us. And to have them part of our program is absolutely incredible. Yeah, I'm excited just because just to have seven new faces on the floor uh, is, is always exciting. And then you you add, add our um, players from last season. And uh, they're young and can, can build upon that. And then we got Tavasha, who's probably who's been here the longest, who's kind of like the mother hen, who, who has kind of continued to, to help these new seven and text them and, and get them ready for the season and get them here and kind of, that's where kind of our chemistry's uh, started a little bit right there is, um, you know, it's, it, it's big to have those, those six that we have coming back already talking to the, to the new players and get them excited. And, and it's seven excited players. They're excited to be here. They're excited about uh, Louisiana Tech and the Lady Texture tr tradition and um, you know playing for Coach Spoon and um, it's just going to be an exciting year. The yeah. atmosphere is just different. Mm -hmm. You can feel a different vibe of energy. Just the text messaging, the calling. They're so they want to move in early. We got girls moving in two weeks early. I mean, they're just excited to play. It's just a different atmosphere. I mm -hmm. feel of energy. No doubt. <laughs>
great friend of mine, Dawn Staley, is going to be entering into our home, into our building. And, you know, we just want people to come out and, and be very supportive of what we're trying to do. Because it's important. It's important that we have that fan base to come out and, and really support what we're trying to accomplish. But to have a friend and a person and a player like Dawn Staley to come into this building, you know, people need to just put their eyes on that period. Uh, because of who she is and what she's done for women's basketball period and what she's doing for young ladies to continue to grow and develop in this game. But we have to have this kind of schedule in order for us to have that measuring stick of where we are or where we have to be in order to be the champions we want to become. I think a schedule this like this, the one that we put that Sarah has put together, is gonna help us in recruiting as well because we're telling kids when we recruit them you're gonna come here and play at the highest level possible. So for us to get a schedule like this with so many SEC teams who, you know, and the SEC is classified as one of the best conferences, and we go and we knock some of those heavy hitters out early this year, when we go out to these homes and talk to these kids and talk to their parents and tell them, listen, we beat South Carolina, we beat a LSU. You know, we want to be one of the elite and premier teams here at Louisiana Tech once again. So, I mean, I think it's a great schedule. That's bottom line. We're yeah. Yeah. Elite. Uh, New York City means a lot to me. You know, I say that a lot, but this place means a lot to me because my professional career really exploded there. Uh, but just to be accepted as an athlete playing professional basketball was, was absolutely awesome. I was just doing something I loved, you know, loved to do was just play basketball. Uh, but I, I don't want anything to be about me. I, I've had my opportunity. I, I loved every minute of it. My experiences were great. It's my turn now to give back to these young people, but I want it to be all about our kids. Uh, because they deserve this exposure. They deserve their moment. They deserve their time. And to play in Madison Square Garden is the best place in the world to play. And for them to be able to walk out of that arena and say, you know, I placed my feet there. I played there. It would be an awesome, awesome experience for them. I just want it to be something great for them. Nothing for me, all for them. Yeah, uh, just to second that, we went last year uh, to a tournament and coach took us to Madison Square Garden in the freezing cold and we're going through the tunnels and just to walk up there and all of a sudden on this big big old cinder block pole there's your head coach Teresa Weatherspoon there's her little name in the you know in the floor the security guards teaspoon teaspoon and she knows them <laughs> you know that to, to especially the six that are going back that's going to be a really really neat opportunity and like coach said best place to play ever Place to your yeah, I'm excited too for, for Coach because that's that's where I grew up watching her play as a player as well. I was coaching men's then, and to be honest, I wasn't even following the women's game. But I mean, everybody knew Teaspoon back then. Just watching her there for the Liberty, and then going back last year was amazing to see all the just the memorabilia of her there and all the fans she had. It was like we were walking with a celebrity, and she had to be her bodyguards. It was it was a great experience, and the players I thought fed off it too. To a, to a pretty good level, and I think our new girls are excited to go there as well and play for their head coach because it has a lot of meaning for her as well. So. I'm gonna be nervous. No, no, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Trust me, I'm gonna be very nervous. I hope they put us in the locker room where I dress because I don't want to go the opposite direction because I don't understand the opposite direction. But I, I'm gonna be extremely nervous, extremely nervous to walk back out there. Uh, but it'll be in a different light. I'll be coaching and not playing, but I'll do what I always, I've always, i always done, and I'll make sure to kiss that floor before getting started. Mm. Nothing Sylvia's fried chicken can't carry. <laughs> what about jumping on the tables, too? Uh, back hey, that, that'll happen once we get that win. <laughs>
No, we just want to gel together, get, gain our chemistry, gain our confidence. And if we can do that, all the other little things follow. Um, the expectations, you know, we, we, we don't want to live up to anyone else's. It's about our expectations of, of each other, of our players, of ourselves as a staff. And if we can do that on a daily basis, something we don't need to, to kind of share. You will see it as our kids start to perform. You will see the expectations. Our kids are going to give that effort every night. They're going to play hard. And they're willing to go through the sacrifice. And that, that, that's the most important thing to us. If they can just sacrifice and do it throughout their season, it doesn't matter. We will live up to our expectations. And I think it's big for us. And I think like we were talking earlier, if we can get our superstars to understand that it takes each one of them to win, it takes each one of them to go through that process, then we're doing something big. Then we're doing great things that we can get them all on that one page. And, and how, how can we do that is the question. The question comes, how can you get your superstars to understand that they must depend on everybody else? Well, as a head coach, I must depend on them. And no shadow of a doubt, I have no ego, by the way, none, zero, none. It is them who help me be who I am. So superstars have to understand that everybody on that roster makes you who you are. And how do we do that? That's where Courtney comes into play. And how we're going to do that is through a lot of team building. And that's where her mind starts to really flow of, of, of um, what we want to become and how we want to become uh, that team we want to become. And that's where Courtney, her mind starts to really flow. I think, I think what our focus is this year is to get the girls together more. You know, we don't want to just focus on we're going to get them together when a recruit comes. We want to do things with them as a team, as a family, because we say, you know, it's not just a program. We're a family here. Uh, we have different activities we're going to do. We're going to go to the Isle Center, which is a ropes course here. Uh, different activities around campus, scavenger hunts. Uh, any, any little thing that people on the outside might think is silly, but in the big picture, the big scheme of things, every little thing matters. And I look at this team as like a pyramid. Okay, so when, when they built pyramids, they didn't start from the top and work their way down. They started at the bottom. So no, the, you can't get to the peak without the base. And so I, you know, like Coach said, we're gonna work our way up. You know, it's not what everybody else expects from us. It's what everybody in this locker room and in that office, when we come together, is what we think. You know, and it's it's, it's just gonna work. It's gonna be big this year. And going on what they said, the, the biggest challenge I think we have is just because we have so many new people is getting them tight knit because everybody knows when you're closer to somebody, you're going to fight harder, you're going to work harder. And I think the one challenge we have right now is getting everybody in, getting them acclimated to each other, to the coaching staff, what we run, and, and getting them feeling comfortable and in a loving environment. Once we have that, I think with our talent, the sky's the limit. But the biggest thing is getting those kids to gel and getting them to know each other and getting that family atmosphere quickly. Win, lose, or draw, it's going to be an exciting team. Uh, fast, get up and down, mm -hmm. run sets. I mean, it's going to be, they're going to be an exciting team to watch. And I think fans are really going to enjoy watching this team. And they're going to get behind different different players and different yeah, kids and yeah. be so excited yeah. about uh, each and every one of them. And they all have such unique and fun personalities. And I think that's good, what's going to be so exciting, especially in this locker room. I think they're going to be such a fun group of, of players um, that you know that's gonna that's gonna gel them as well. So, uh, like Coach C, the more the more that we're together and and, and gel and, and can do uh, different activities, you know, the the better I think we're gonna be on the court between those lines. Um, with Hurricane Isaac, you know, we want everybody to know that we are in prayer because you know we have. Uh, staff members, Coach Carter and, and Brian as well, their families are in direct path of this entire thing. Uh, we want everybody out there to know in direct path or not that we're truly in prayer for everybody. And, and that even afterwards, you're still in our prayers. And if this program, the Lady Texas Basketball Program, or this staff can do anything to be of help, we're willing. We're ready to go. We're ready to move. Uh, this is the kind of staff that I have, a young, go-getting kind of staff, but we're also caring and loving. And right now, our minds and our thoughts and our prayers are with everyone who has been affected by this, directly or indirectly. Amen. Okay, there's, um, that was a, a, a thought that crossed my mind, and I sat down with Brian to talk with him about it and just thought, you know, Brian, how about having an all access kind of thing with everybody getting to see what happens behind the scenes with us as coaches and players and the team that we want to become, people getting an opportunity to see how we got started to become the team we, 
we, we want to become. And I just threw that out at him and said, well, what, what do you think that we could come up with to, to make sure that people get an opportunity to see that and, and share our vision? And he's like, well, I don't really want to call it all access. So I'll just let you tell them, Brian, exactly what your thought process behind was behind that open. Well, at the top of the Coach Spoon, I knew that, I mean, all access was what everybody used. And I just wanted to change it to something. And we're all about vision and goals and setting those goals and reaching that vision. And I, you know, vision played in with the Lady Texters and I just put it together, Lady Texters Vision. And throughout the year, we're going to have inside access. I mean, we'll be in the locker rooms, in the offices. I'm covering every angle, north, east, south, and west. God help us. <laughs> He's covering everything. You hear that? So everybody be careful. So we're keeping it real. So everything you see, with our hairs done, our clothes look sweaty, whatever. But when we clean up, we clean up well. Right, Brian? Oh, yeah. So whatever he tapes, it's real. <laughs>